Hello and welcome to the March 11th edition of the Hot Tip Bets Daily Show. The bubble is starting to shrink. Had a couple of upsets go on last night, pretty much knocking some more teams out of the tournament race. So we'll get into all of that, talk about what's going on with all these conference tournaments. But before we get into that, let's take a look back um, at how the picks did yesterday. So we start out um, with Iona taking on Sienna. Second day in a row, we are on Iona. Um, and Iona pulls it out at the end here, ends up winning this game 55-52, to 52, covering the one and a half point spread. Um, Asante Gers puts up 16 points for Iona in this one, and Iona just out-rebounded Sienna here. 39 rebounds for Iona, only 29 for Sienna. Um, and, you know, this feels like it could be the start of um, what may be a tournament run for this Iona team. You know, coming into this MAC tournament as a nine seed, um, but really, in all actuality, they were probably, you know, one of the top four teams in the MAC. Just MAC kind of had some some crazy seedings there. But um, definitely, this Rick Patino led uh, Rick Patino led Iona team is one to look out for. Um, the next game we had on the card yesterday, we had a Big Ten matchup between Minnesota and Northwestern. Minnesota um, ends up winning this game 51 to 46, covering that two and a half point spread. Um, they're actually underdogs, so they didn't even need the spread there. But Trey Williams puts up 14 points for Minnesota in this game. And Minnesota just did a really good job shooting the basketball, 36.7% from the field. Um, Northwestern only 31%. So um, low scoring game here, but Minnesota is able to pull away from that one. Um, the next game we had on the card, we head to the ACC. Um, and this was probably the worst pick we had of the day. <laughs> Notre Dame plus the next six and a half versus North Carolina. Uh, Notre Dame ends up winning, or North Carolina ends up winning this game um, in a landslide, 101 to 59, pretty much cementing their at large bid into the tournament. Amante Bacal puts up 20 points and 13 rebounds for North Carolina in this one. Um, and North Carolina just outshot uh, Notre Dame in here. 50.6 from the field for North Carolina. Notre Dame only 31.1 from the field. So got our first loss there. And we almost turned it into a profitable day with Penn State. Penn State taking on Nebraska. Penn State minus 6.5. And, and Penn State led for the majority of this game. At one point, they were down like 15 points to this Nebraska team in the first half. End up cutting back. Ending up winning. End up winning by 6 points. 72 to 66. Um, so we don't quite cover that 6.5 point spread there. Terry McGollins puts up 13 points for Nebraska here. I mean, I think what really led this Penn State comeback, 43 rebounds for him, Nebraska 28 rebounds. So um, even though we didn't win that, watching the game, that was probably one that we didn't deserve to win anyway. So um, end up going two and two for Wednesday's college basketball picks. Now moving into some of the college basketball news for the day. Um, you know, there's we heard from uh, a little bit more news about how March Madness might work with some of these protocols in place this season. Um, and it sounds like as long as a team has five players that are eligible and healthy to play, the game <laughs> will go on um, unless the team um, forfeits or something. But the teams can play as long as they have five players um, and they're willing to play. Um, that is up to it. I did see, though, that the coach, um, whether or not a coach would be available um, if, if it was only five players and no coaches, what the what the thing would that be? So um, be interesting to see if we see a scenario like that. I doubt any team. I mean, it'd be crazy to see a team try and play with five players, but um, who knows what we might see. And another little th crazy thing we saw yesterday um, regarding some of the, um, I don't know, kind of protocols, but Marquette was not able to find a practice or somewhere to practice the morning before, uh, yesterday morning before their Georgetown game. Um, end up practicing outside <laughs> because because of that, um, and it um, didn't help him win against Georgetown and losing that one later in the night. But just an interesting little tidbit there out of Marquette. Um, and the last little news here before we move into some picks: um, Xavier loses to Butler, um, which is likely the end of the road for the Xavier team. They were sitting on the bubble. I think Lenardi had him in his bracket still as of yesterday, but. Um, with that loss to Butler in the first round here of the Big East tournament, um, it seems very unlikely that the Xavier team is going to mount anything. So um, that about wraps it up for the news. So let's get into some picks for this uh, for today. Um, we start out in the MAC. We start out with Ball State taking on Toledo. Um, now Ball State comes into this game at ten and twelve on the season. Toledo pretty good at twenty and seven. Um, Toledo, what they've done really well this season is shot, shooting the basketball, hitting. 28.6% of their shots from beyond the arc. Ball State on the other hand only hitting 41 or 34.1%. Um, Toledo's also done a good job shooting from the field too with an effective field goal percentage of 54.6. Ball State only an effective field goal percentage of 51.5. Um, and this Toledo team um, is really just a good team on offense. 11th in adjusted offensive efficiency, um, which is absolutely insane. 
Um, this Ball State team nowhere near that 155 in adjusted offensive efficiency. And while these two teams do even are pretty even in, on defense, 156 in adjusted defensive efficiency for Ball State, Toledo 153 in adjusted defensive efficiency. Um, I think Toledo is going to have the edge in this matchup. You know, Toledo just plays more well-rounded basketball. They do a really good job not turning the ball over, only turning it over on 15.5% of their possessions. Ball State turning it over on 19.9% of theirs. So um, I like this Toledo team minus eight here uh, to get it done in the first game. Moving on to the second game of the day, we got Northern Colorado taking on Southern Utah. Southern Utah, six-point favorites in this one. Um, Southern Utah actually comes into this game at 19-3 and on the season. Um, North Carolina, not North Carolina, Northern uh, Colorado, 11-10 and on the season. Um, and one impressive stat um, about this Southern Utah team is how good they've done rebounding the ball offensively, pulling down 29.9% of their buckets off the offensive glass. Northern Colorado struggling a little bit in their area, only pulling down 24%. Um, Northern Colorado also really struggling to shoot free throws, only hitting 68.1% of their shots from the free throw line. Southern Utah on their hands in 75.3% of theirs. Southern Utah also doing a very good job not turning the ball over, only turning it over on 16.4% of their possessions, while Northern Colorado is turning it over on 20.4% of theirs. Um, and the Southern Utah team is just much better on offense. Coming into this one, 90th in adjusted offensive efficiency, while Northern Colorado, 255 in adjusted offensive efficiency. So um, I like Southern Utah there to, uh, to cover that um, six-point spread. The next game on the card, we got Montana State minus two versus Idaho State. The Montana State um, comes into this game at 11 and nine on the season. Idaho State 13 and 10. Um, and Montana State has done a very good job shooting the basketball. An effective field goal percentage of 50.9%, while Idaho State only an effective field goal percentage of 48%. Um, Montana State also doing a good job shooting free throws, 73.8% from the free throw line, while Idaho State only hitting 68.6% .6 of their shots. Montana State also hitting the, um, shooting good from three, 33.3% from beyond the arc, Idaho State only 31% from beyond the arc. Um, and Montana State does a great job not turning the basketball over, only turns it over on 17.9% of their possessions. Idaho State turns it over um, on 23.9% of theirs. And you know, this Montana State team just more well-rounded on offense, 229th in adjusted offensive efficiency, while Idaho State 315 in adjusted offensive efficiency. So um, like Montana State there to cover the two point spread. Next game on the card, we got Ryder taking on St. Peter's. Ryder is six-point underdogs in this game, um, but Ryder has actually played some decent basketball. While they are 6-16 six and 16 on the season compared to St. Peter's 13-10, and 10, um, their record doesn't necessarily, um, isn't necessarily a good reflection on how well they have played this season, you know. Um, they've done a good great job shooting the basketball when compared to St. Peter's, you know, hitting 35% from beyond the arc. St. Peter's only hitting 31.7%. Um, Ryder also knocking down 73.7% .7 of their free throws, uh, while St. Peter only 69.5. Um, and Ryder does have an effective field percentage of 48.1, which isn't great. But St. Peter, one of the worst um, effective field throw percentages in the country at 44.9. So um, while this Ryder team doesn't shoot lights out by any means, um, this St. Peter's team is honestly one of the worst shooting teams in the country. And it shows just um, in their adjusted offensive efficiency, you know, 341 adjusted offensive efficiency, you know, bottom bottom uh, 15 team in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency right around their hand 234 um, and Ryder does a great job not turning the ball over holding on to that possession only turns it over on 18.1 percent of their possessions St. Peter on the other hand turning it over on 21.8 percent of theirs so um, like Ryder in this game plus the six points and the final game we got on the card, we moved to the Big 12. We got Texas Tech minus one and a half versus Texas. Um, now, while these two teams look pretty even on paper, I do give the slight edge um, to Texas Tech. You know, this Chris Beard led team is doing very good. Um, you know, they currently are still the <laughs> defending runner up. Um, and, and they've just been very good on both sides of the basketball the year. 31st in adjusted offensive efficiency, 23rd in adjusted defensive efficiency. Um, and, you know, while Texas is much behind that, 28th in adjusted offensive and 32nd in adjusted defensive, I do think this Texas Tech team has just played better basketball. Um, Texas Tech only turning over on 16.1% of their possessions, while Texas, on the other hand, turning over on 19.7% of theirs. Texas Tech also doing a good job pulling down the buckets off the offensive glass, 334 for them. Um, and Texas only pulling down 34.5. Um, and Texas Tech does have the slight edge here as far as shooting free throws goes, hitting 71.4% of their shots from the free throw line. 
uh, while Texas only hitting 19.7% of theirs. So um, like Texas Tech and Chris Beard here, minus the one and a half to get it done. Um, that about wraps it up for today's college basketball picks. Thanks for watching today's episode. If you want to see any picks or if you want to see picks for all the tournament games going on today, head over to hottipbets.com. Check out the computer model picks there. I've um, got picks for all the games for today's college basketball games, as well as NBA games today, NHL games today. Um, and as always, daily horse racing picks up there. Um, you can also check out the results up there for all the picks given out on the show here, as well as all of the computer model picks um, given out there. Plus, if you want to get this little bit of sneak peek every day um, on what picks I might be giving out on the show. Make sure you're following me on BetStamp at Hot Tip Bets Chris. That's what I use to track and verify all of the picks given out here on the show. Also follow Hot Tip Bets Chris on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on all that content, um, as well as the Hot Tip Bets main account on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, and if you're watching this video on Facebook, or, well, yeah, if you are watching on Facebook, it is on Facebook. But more importantly, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow.